The London, Midland and Scottish Railway was the largest of the railways that were generally known as the Big Four, which were nationalised in 1948 to form British Railways. Naturally, the largest railway had the largest express passenger locomotives, Sir William Stanier's celebrated Duchess class, of which one, in the ownership of the National Railway Museum at York, works today, Duchess of Hamilton. Such a large system, stretching from Bournemouth in the south to Wick in the north, invariably had many different routes, from the trunk route to Scotland to the cross-country Somerset and Dorset, which took its engines to the south coast. The Premier Express passenger locomotives worked on the trunk routes, whilst the secondary routes, still boasting expresses, such as the Pines Express, used the ubiquitous Tanya Black 5 4 6 clothes on their fastest workings. By the 1950s, the Black Fives were working over the metals and lines on which they weren't native, such as the Great Central, which had fallen into the London Midland region's control after nationalisation. And they took turn and turn about on the cross-country expresses from the Midlands to the south coast via the western region at Banbury. This vast class, 842 were built, was familiar in all parts of the LMS empire, and were equally at home on fast freights as well as express passenger trains. Holiday times brought them out in great force, particularly in the West Midlands and on the former London North Western lines in North Wales. The famous North Wales coastal main line was one of their major stamping grounds. The site of a Black Five was as much part of the scenery as Telford's famous bridge on the old fortifications set at the end of the causeway at Conway, guarding the estuary. The LNWR's line was blended into the castle walls and the Jubilee Bridge complemented the suspension bridge. Black Fives were shedded at Llandidno Junction and were used right to the end of steam operation on this coastal route in the 1960s. Black Fives gained their name from the colour they were always painted, black, and their power grade in the LMS Motive Power Classification Scheme, which was of course five. Railway enthusiasts called them Black Fives to distinguish them from the Red Fives, which were the very similar looking 5 XP class Jubilees which were Sir William Stanier's general intermediate passenger locomotives. These were painted in LMS Maroon in pre-nationalisation times and wore British Railways express passenger livery of lined out Brunswick Green in the 1950s and 1960s. The Jubilees were three-cylindered locomotives and were first produced in 1934. The class of 191 were completed by 1936 and outnumbered all the other modern LMS six-coupled express engines added together. They were thus truly the archetypal LMS express passenger locomotives. They were, appropriately enough, the last to remain in British Railways service, although in later years they were banned from working over some parts of the system when electrification took place south of Crewe, denoted by a yellow stripe on the campsite. There were two varieties of the locomotives, later ones having a longer firebox, but the most distinctive visual variations was the type of tender fitted to some of the class, the small Fowler 3,500 gallon tenders with coal rails, which didn't suit them at all. Four of the class bore double chimney boilers at some time, the most notable being 45596 Bahamas, which received its double chimney in BR days and was one of the last of the class to be withdrawn. Of course, this is one of the locomotives which was preserved, as we'll see later, but at the end of steam it was popular for rail tours due to its unique status. The Jubilees were the mainstay of express passenger power on the former Midland lines, and in the last years became well known on the Settle and Carlisle, the final engines working over this route from Leeds. The LMS Railway's first large express passenger locomotives were the Royal Scott 460s. The original machines were built as a panic reaction to a sudden need for powerful express locomotives in the mid-1920s, after a period in which former Midland Railway design practice had held sway over LMS policy. 
This had resulted in large numbers of underpowered 440s as the main LMS top line motive power, which became overwhelmed by the increasing weight of trains in the early days of grouping. The then chief mechanical engineer, Sir Henry Fowler, ordered the 70 Royal Scots direct from the drawing board of the North British Railway Company, and they were an instant success. However, by the mid-1930s, the Royal Scots were being compared with the more recent Stanier types, and their maintenance costs were very high. In these cash-strapped years, scrapping could not be considered for relatively new machines, so a comprehensive reconstruction program was instigated by Stanier, effectively turning the locomotives into a Stanier Class 6 machine. The product was a highly successful and effective new design, which, when compared with nominally more powerful locomotives during British Railway's 1948 locomotive exchange trials, comfortably outperformed them. Reconstruction didn't start until 1943, eight years after Stanier had proposed it, and didn't finish until 1955 under British Railways. The new boilers were lighter in weight than those they replaced, and the result was that the rebuilds were permitted to run on Midland metals, where the Jubilees had been the heaviest locomotives previously. They also became well known for their association with Leeds Holbeck Depot, powering the principal Midland Division Expresses from the Midlands to London St Pancras. However, their final sphere of operations included alien lines, particularly the Great Central Route from Sheffield via Nottingham and Leicester to London Marylebone. It's on these services that we see a number of the class at work in the 1960s. Five of them survived until 1965, and two of them are preserved today. But sadly, only one of them, 6115 Scots Guardsmen, has worked on the main lines, and then very briefly in the early 1970s. It was due to receive an overhaul to the main line condition at Tisley and Birmingham in the early 1990s. The other preserved engine is 6100, the Royal Scot, which is at the Bressingham Museum in Norfolk. The LMS never had a fully satisfactory complement of top link express locomotives, as the largest locomotives were Stanier's Pacifics, totaling only 50 conventional and one experimental machine of two main classes. The first type, of which there were 12, were the Princess Royals, to which group the experimental machine, the Turbomotive, also belonged. The remaining 38 were Princess Coronations, or more commonly, Duchesses. The first 10, number 46220 to 29, were originally built as streamlined engines to head the Coronation Express and other principal expresses from 1937. The next batch of only five engines emerged in an unstreamlined form in 1938 and revealed a classic outline. All the streamliners were eventually defrocked into this form after the war, but numbers 46230 to 34 were the only non-streamliners before the war. Like numbers 25 to 29, they were named after duchesses, the earlier engines being named after members of the royal family. With one exception, the remaining 22 were named after cities with which the LMS had ties. Number 6244 was originally City of Leeds, but this was changed to King George VI soon after it was built. The name City of Leeds was reused on number 6248, the last streamliner to be built. The locomotives had a complicated history. They were a development of the previous Princess class, but were considerably more powerful. They had four cylinders with the inside valves operated by rocking levers from the outside gear, giving them a more conventional appearance than the earlier engines. They had the largest boiler of any LMS engine and the biggest firebox. They're generally reckoned to be the most powerful British Pacifics, although others have nominally greater theoretic attractive effort. They were designed to take 14 coach Scotch Expresses up both Shap and Beatick banks on the West Coast main line unaided. They worked throughout on the 400 plus mile route without the need to change locomotives at Carlisle, as had been the necessity in the days of the Royal Scots. The initial streamlined batch were produced in that form to the requirements of the LMS publicity department, which wanted the fashionable image of streamlining to compete against Gresley's famous A4 class on the LNER. Unlike those locomotives, the streamlining was not an integral part of the design of the engine. So when post-war needs meant that maintenance was of more importance than fashion, the streamlining was rapidly removed, although 14 streamliners were built during the war. 
Four non-streamliners were built in 1944, and the last three were completed in 1946. The locomotive's greatest work came after the war, as they were the top link power for only two years before the war, and afterwards for 15 years, until they were replaced by electrics and diesels in the early 1960s. After the war, two further Pacifics were added to a modified design. The first of these, number 46256, was named Sir William A. Stanier FRS in honor of the great locomotive engineer. The second engine was named City of Salford, and it was announced that they'd been built for comparative tests against the two prototype mainline diesel locomotives, numbers 10,000 and 10,001 which were the progenitors of the diesel revolution that was to sweep all steam away by 1968. In the late 1950s, 16 of the Duchesses regained an LMS-style maroon livery for use on toppling named expresses. The one working example of the three survivors of the class retains this livery, whilst number 6233, Duchess of Sutherland, is painted in her original LMS livery, and 46235, City of Birmingham, is in B.R. Green in that city's museum. We now turn to the working survivors of LMS Express steam locomotives, starting with a unique example of the numerous class of 460 Black Fives. This is a post-war example, 44767. The engine was part of a batch of a hundred engines on which various experiments were tried, which included Caprotti valve gear on 22 engines, various forms of roller bearing axle boxes, and on this engine alone, outside Stevenson Link valve gear. It's worked on BR steam specials and, after an overhaul, returned to work on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway in early 1992. <laughs> The next Black Fire was a 1945 built crew example. 44871 is seen in Scotland during her first season on the West Highland steam excursions when she was one of three locomotives in use from Fort William.
The West Highland steam operation has become an annual fixture and is perhaps the most successful of modern steam working. Black Fives have worked here each year since it started in 1984. For a while after restoration at Carnforth, 44871 sported the name Sovereign, but for most of the time the engine has run nameless. The locomotive's main claim to fame is that it was used on British Rail's last steam hauled passenger train in 1968, at the end of the first age of steam. Preservation has given us a second age of steam, and Black Fives have proved to be as prolific in preservation terms as they were in service days. Our third Black Five is another 1945 built engine, this time a product of Horwich Works. Number 44932 has also had a season in Scotland working in the spectacular West Highland scenery. This engine is based in Derbyshire at Butterley and was used for what was intended to be a regular steam route from Nottingham to Lincoln. Unfortunately, this train and one other failed to attract sufficient interest and this was the only visit to Lincoln by a Black Five in preservation. Four forty nine thirty two has been quite wide ranging in her duties, including a visit to Manchester via the picturesquely named Hope Valley route from Sheffield. Picturesque is the word for the scene to greet our next Black Five, number 5025, which is based on the Strathspey Railway in Scotland. Snow always adds a touch of interest to steam workings. This machine was one of the very first batch of Black Fives to be built by outside contractors at Vulcan Works in 1934. She's also boasted a few runs on BR metals, 
but has been confined to the former Highland main line from Aviemore in recent years. Perhaps the most wide-ranging preserved Black Five of all is the Hull Locomotive Preservation Society's number 5305. The engine has an interesting history, which is commemorated by the name it carries, Alderman A.E. Draper. Draper was a Hull scrap merchant who bought a number of locomotives from BR at the end of steam for scrap. One, however, was retained and not scrapped, and she works today. The 305 was a member of the largest batch of Black Fives to be built. 227 were produced in 1936 and 1937 by Armstrong Whitworth as part of the LMS Railway's policy to replace many obsolete pre-grouping locomotives with these modern 460s. 5407 was also an Armstrong Whitworth product and is yet another to have worked in Scotland. The return workings from the West Highlands have resulted in steam passenger runs over the Glasgow and Southwestern Main Line, which is where we see this Carnforth-based machine on its way home. At one stage during the preservation era, black fives were common on the famous Settle and Carlisle line. In recent years, however, the plethora of larger locomotives has squeezed them out. 5407 got a rare run on the SNC as she returned home. As we saw earlier, Black Fives were the mainstay of the North Wales coastline. 5407 relived that period in the early 1990s, working on the North Wales Coast Express. Hollyhead route has been established as one of the major steam lines in recent times, although this is the only Black Five to have worked it in preservation. Our final Black Five is 45428, inevitably another Armstrong Whitworth machine. This engine has spent its preserved career on the North Yorkshire Moors Railway, where it's a mainstay of the line's motive power.
Proportionately, the Jubilees are nearly as well represented today as Black Fives. Three of the 191 locomotives have been restored to running order, and the remains of a fourth have been kept to provide spares. 5593 Kolapur illustrates their original condition in the attractive red livery used by the LMS. This machine belongs to the Birmingham Railway Museum at Tisley and has a mainline ticket. After an overhaul, she was loaned to the Great Central Railway where we see her at work. The second jubilee is Bahamas, the celebrated double chimney locomotive, which we saw in its last BR service days. Originally, she was also restored to LMS livery, but in the late 1980s, she re-emerged after a prolonged overhaul in BR express passenger green livery and became an undoubted star on the mainline steam front. Just after restoration, she was used for a series of Derby to Nottingham specials to celebrate 150 years of railways at Derby. A great deal of this engine's work has been over the Settle and Carlisle.
Of course, workings on the SNC inevitably bring back memories of the last days of steam, when the Jubilees enjoyed their swan song from Leeds Holbeck. Thomas was part of a batch of 50 locomotives provided by the North British Locomotive Company of Glasgow during 1934 and 1935, the only group amongst the class to be built by outside contractors. Unlike most other LMS classes, their production was over a very brief period. The first were built in 1934 and the last in 1936. The double chimney didn't endow the locomotive with any great benefits and few of the class were altered but it does enable it to stand out from its restored single chimney sisters. The final view of Bahamas is still on the Settle and Carlisle, with which the engine has become synonymous, although she has worked to Hereford and along the North Wales coast in recent years. Perhaps one of the best known preserved LMS locomotives is Stanius Princess Elizabeth. Restored to the original LMS livery of her introduction in 1933, she's been active in preservation since the 1970s, thanks to the efforts of her owning group, who've overhauled her at Hereford. So our first view is on the Welsh Marches Express. She was built at Crewe, and it's appropriate that a great deal of her recent work has been on the steam routes radiating from her birthplace. The engine was one of a pair, 6200 and 6201, which were the first true Stania locomotives. They were a Pacific development of the Great Western King class, as Sir William Stania had been trained at Swindon. The position of the outside cylinders gives a clue to their origin, but the development produced a very different machine for their size. Appropriately, this engine was named after the king's daughter.
When introduced, they set the style for Stenio's great standardization policy for the LMS, but they weren't instantly successful. Many teething problems arose, but were mainly cured by the provision of a high superheat boiler, the shape and position of the fitments to this being the only differences displayed by the preserved engine when compared to its original form. Lizzie is a popular engine, but it was thought that her comparatively small tender would preclude her from working on the North Wales Coast Expresses. In the event, she was given a chance and proved herself quite economical and became a popular machine on the coast. The locomotive has also seen a lot of work on the Settle and Carlisle in her preservation career. This line was to witness one of the few problems for steam engines when Princess Elizabeth stalled on a southbound winter train. She was later taken to crew where it was found that her weight balance was out of adjustment and once corrected she became her old effective self. Here we see her on her way back from crew to Carnforth for another northern season. The Big Pacific has also worked on the Cumbrian coastline, 
one from which she was barred in her service days. The 12 princesses worked the adjacent West Coast Main Line throughout their careers. In 1936, Lizzie set a series of records on the West Coast Main Line to Glasgow that have not been beaten by steam as part of the preparations for the introduction of the later Stania Pacifics. Princess Elizabeth has a sister, Princess Margaret Rose. It's a happy coincidence that the two preserved Princess Royal Pacifics are named after our monarch and her sister. The second locomotive joined Lizzie on the main line in 1990. This is her first public run. The engine is based at Butterley near Derby, and so her first work was in the Midlands area, on circular trips from Derby to Sheffield and back. She had one southbound run to Didcot, unusual metals for a Stania Pacific. This engine was restored by a group of businessmen led by Brel Hewitt and owes its existence to Sir Billy Butlin. The famous provider of holidays for the masses bought a number of locomotives from British Railways at the end of steam to display at his holiday camps. Princess Margaret Rose spent many years by the seaside in North Wales before returning to Derbyshire and it's at Butterley where she was restored that we see inside her camp. This was a rare run on a home base, as she's officially too heavy for the line and only works very occasionally by special dispensation.
Preservation has taken this locomotive to the settle in Carlisle, where she shared duties with her sister, and during the summer of 1991, worked two trains in association with Princess Elizabeth. The engine is finished in BR's version of the LMS Red livery, which was carried by the four members of the class, but not by this engine. It's highly likely that she'll appear in another livery in due course. The BR Red livery is, however, the only correct livery for 46229 Duchess of Hamilton. Once again, we see an engine on a test run on the Derby Circle. This machine is another of those rescued by Sir Billy Butlin. Its subsequent history is different to 46203, inasmuch as it now belongs to the nation as part of the collection of the National Railway Museum at York. The Duchess is one of their most popular exhibits, yet none was proposed for preservation in the 1960s, when a list of historically important locomotives was drawn up, which eventually became the backbone of the national collection. Fortunately, Butlins allowed the NRM to have custody of the engine, and the Friends of the National Railway Museum group was formed to raise funds to restore her to full working order. After a seven-year stint on the main lines in the early 1980s, she underwent another overhaul at the end of the decade, during which time she was purchased outright by the NRM from Butlins, and subsequently has become a guaranteed draw on her workings all over the country, most notably as here on the Settle and Carlisle. Duchess of Hamilton was one of the original streamliners built before the war. She was sent to America shortly before war broke out to represent the LMS at the New York World's Fair, which kept her there from 1939 to 1942. For this mission, she took the identity of the class pioneer coronation, but they reverted to their true identities when she returned. When 
the streamliners were defrocked after the war, the engines had a sloping top to their smoke boxes. These were gradually replaced by conventional fully rounded smoke boxes, as renewal became necessary in the 1950s. So Duchess of Hamilton, in her preserved form, is strictly only correct in her final livery, which is BR Red. She was one of 16 of her class to sport this livery. The Duchess has also seen service on the North Wales coast route. This line did occasionally see them in service days, as we've seen, but they were essentially associated with the West Coast main line to Glasgow and its offshoots to Liverpool, Birmingham and Manchester. Our final view shows this great national treasure on the coast route once again.